besides of, uh, uh, cervical cancer and uterine cancer, uh, in ovarian uh, cancer we still don't have any FDA approved indication for uh, immunotherapy. Uh, having said that, we, we always have to, to remember that if a tumor is microsatellite instable, uh, we can still use pembrolizumab. And, and I'm saying that because uh, although if you look at high-grade serous ovarian cancer, the incidence of microsatellite instability is very, very low, it's about 1-2%, to 2 there are certain subtypes of ovarian cancer, for example, the low-grade endometrioid subtype, uh, where they, we can see microsatellite instability. Interestingly, I want to mention here, uh, clear cell ovarian cancer, which is a very aggressive and unique subtype of ovarian cancer, uh, in a study that we did in our institution, um, uh, we looked at 30 clear cell tumors, we found that three of them were microsatellite instable, and they actually had the uh, clinical characteristics, uh, characteristics of uh, uh, tumors that, that are microsatellite instable. So they had high tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, they had high PDL1 expression. So I think it's interesting and I think it's worth uh, when you dealing with a clear cell ovarian cancer to send a microsatellite instability testing either by immunohistochemistry because even if it's, it's, it's going to be very rare um, even if it's 5 or 10 percent, 10 percent in our study, <laughs> again small numbers, uh, uh, these are tumors that are very difficult to treat and if, you, uh, if we, we find that they are microsatellite unstable then we can offer these patients uh, meaningful responses with immunotherapy.